Okay, welcome back. We're going to take a look at another set of APIs. We're actually going to take a look at two different APIs. Here we are listing them in their full name. The vSphere Storage API for storage awareness and the vSphere APIs for IO filtering. These are actually more familiarly known as VASA, V-A-S-A, -A, and also the other one is known as V-A-I-O. So apparently the letter F was a bit too expensive for this API. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is uh, our explanation of these two different APIs. VAIO comes after VASA, otherwise known as VASA. So what are these? Well, we'll take a look at what the vSphere Storage API for Storage Awareness is. And basically it says it ensures that we learn what are all the capabilities from our storage array and also how vendors can create data services for VMs using the vSphere APIs for IO filtering. What this is really simply is these are two different APIs for the storage to advertise capabilities to vSphere. It's quite different than the hardware acceleration that VAAI provides, right? VAAI is allowing the SX server to work with the array to offload operations. This is about information exchanging to let vSphere learn about what are the capabilities about the storage. And we'll find out why that's important. So our first one here, right? The vSphere API for storage awareness, otherwise known as VASA. You'll hear post people just refer to it as VASA, right? Basically a storage vendor can develop a software component called a storage provider. Basically what this is, this is a piece of software on the array that can be used to advertise the array's capabilities to vSphere. Right, so that what's what's that storage provider? Well, that depends on what the storage vendor implements. The storage vendor may implement this in firmware. The storage vendor may implement this in an appliance. The storage vendor may implement this in a virtual appliance. But in any case, it's a way for there to be basically probably a web URL more than anything that vCenter can actually register, be able to log into, and learn about the capabilities of your storage. Right through this API, the provider obtains information about the available storage topology, right? What's going on behind the scenes at the array level? What RAID levels there are? What underlying disk characteristics are the disks, um, you know, uh, SSDs, are they hard drives? What's their RPMs? What's their IOP capabilities? What are their throughput capabilities? What's the usage, you know, has the storage been labeled in any way, right? Is it meant to be, you know, uh, capacity storage? Is it meant to be uh, web usage, is it meant to be tier one, tier two? You can provide as a storage vendor, the storage provider essentially, can decide what it is that they're going to advertise through this API. And so then what this gives, the benefit here is the vSphere admins can learn about what the storage characteristics are about the storage that is connected to vSphere without actually having to work with the storage team directly, right? We don't have to call them on the phone. Imagine you have a large environment, you've got hundreds of LUNs that vSphere could be connecting to. And when you look at a LUN from the vSphere client, you can't tell necessarily what are all the characteristics about that LUN, right? You don't even know what rate it is or what its performance characteristics are. You'd have to basically have a spreadsheet which mapped out each LUN and what they're all, all their different characteristics are. And of course, this would help then define how would you go and build a data store. Well, you go and create a data store any old way you're creating a data store, but what you label the data store right? That can also have an impact on how would, uh, you know, if somebody's going to go and build a VM, the VM administrator needs to be able to place the VM on the most appropriate storage. Well, if you're going to build a VM and place it on storage, having a data store with a name that actually says what its characteristics are might be helpful, but I'm not sure if everybody comes up with a consistent naming convention, right? If you could call each of your data stores like Gold 1, Gold 2, Gold 3, and then create another set of data stores named Silver 1, Silver 2, Silver 3, that might be helpful, but that's just the name. That doesn't necessarily mean there's actually a real um, meaning behind it. It's just whatever somebody named their data store. If we could actually find out the characteristics by having the storage advertise those characteristics, that would help us out on the vSphere administration side quite immensely. So basically what we have is vCenter server will register with the storage provider that your array has. So again, this is something that you'll need to license with your storage vendor. The storage vendor will provide with a VASA provider. And so then you'll typically license it from the vendor to implement this either in firmware or in an appliance or in a virtual appliance. So then now we can learn about all those things on the vSphere side. What this is really useful for is you can then use this information, the capabilities coming from the storage, 
to determine what kind of storage policies would you like to implement? Because you'll probably have a whole set of storage options that might be providing things like performance, but it might also, the storage may also provide things like compression. The storage may provide encryption. These are things that we can you know, find out what the backend storage is providing, and then we can decide which of those features would we like to implement into a policy. So this makes it even easier. You might have hundreds of data stores, but they might fit within just a few categories or a few tiers of storage, right? You might have tier one storage that's got the high speed storage. You might have tier two storage that has more standard storage. You might have more secure storage that's being encrypted at the storage level. So you can create policies and then effectively choose the, um, the storage options based on which LUNs offer which of those different capabilities. So that's really what the benefits of the storage provider. So that the providers can give your vSphere admins information about the underlying storage capabilities and their state of the physical storage devices. You also can use these storage providers to monitor health and use of the physical storage devices and very importantly, create VM storage policies so that they have the correct storage in terms of space requirements and service level agreements requirements and so on. Now VASA has actually gone through several updates over the years. It was first implemented in vSphere 5. That was VASA for version 1.0. That was a one-way type of communication channel where the array would advertise to vSphere its capabilities. And we could use this to implement storage policies. With vSphere 5.5, update one was the introduction to VASA 1.5, which is basically where vSAN was introduced. And vSAN also can participate in the VASA information so that when you build vSAN policies, it can be based on the underlying storage characteristics. It also became a two-way communications channel where this is useful is not only can we understand the capabilities about the storage, but when creating policies with the two-way communication, the policy can actually be enforced on that underlying storage. And that's actually where VASA 2.0 came out with vSphere 6, we got two-way communication with the array. That's a bit different than the 1.5. 1.5 was two-way communication between the, um, the array and the ESXi host here we can now have two-way communication between the array and the vSphere APIs. This is where if you're using things like virtual volumes, you can create a storage policy that's based on array capabilities. In fact, in order to use virtual volumes, you need VASA 2.0. The VASA 2.0 will provide the list of capabilities that your underlying storage provides. And then you create a policy that says, I want this policy to have these sets of characteristics. Well, then the VASA two-way communication will then be using the communication back to the array to enforce the placement of the VMs. Because your array may have all kinds of different types of disks, and you're going to create a subset of those disks in a policy. And that's really what a policy is, right? It's a restriction of some kind saying, we're only going to use these features out of the however many features there are on the array. And so we want to make sure that the VM will be placed on the disks that support just those features. Now with VASA 3.0, we now have support for array-based replication for virtual volumes. Also a very powerful feature that was introduced in vSphere 6.5. So the storage providers, right? There's kind of different categories of storage providers. You have storage providers that can provide things such as data services, but there's also storage providers that can provide us with um, you know, information about the array. So that's a bit different, but we can learn about what are the different data services. Like for instance, does, does the array offer its own replication or does the array provide some kind of offloading of uh, say snapshots or being able to offload encryption right the virtual volume storage provider is an example of the array providing this information but also there may be data services that can be provided for vsan so there's also the vsan storage provider can provide those characteristics as well and therefore the storage providers may actually come from different locations they could come from vmware internally that would be the vsan storage provider but they could also come from third parties Typically, the Array's storage vendor is going to be that third-party provider for those virtual volumes. So basically, one thing you have to do is simply on vCenter, register with your storage provider. So on vCenter server, you go to the vCenter service configuration page, select the storage providers link, tell it you want to create a new storage provider, and then provide the URL to the storage provider that's being provided by your storage system. They probably will require you to put in some credentials, and you're going to need to give a name to the storage provider. So we'll take a quick break here and we're gonna come back and take a look at the other API here called APIs for IO filtering. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs> 